The 90s! Well, we've already covered the fervent whirlwind of the 70s and the vivid nostalgia of the 80s, so it makes sense that we dig up the dirt of the 90s where horror cinema tragically went to die before being painstakingly resurrected in some of the most original and creative efforts of the genre as a whole. The 90s were an era of dichotomy. In many ways, it exemplified comfort, where horror cinema relied solely on the multiple franchises that had carried them through from the trying times of the 80s. But on the flip side to that, the true heroes of horror were trying their damnedest to reinvent the wheel and figure out exactly how to scare us in ways never before seen in cinema. So I guess we better take a look. Hello horror fans, what's going on and once again welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual I'll be your horror host Jack Finch as today we curiously take a look at the Top 5 Scariest Horror Movies from the 90s. For the clip. I killed him. You still wake up sometimes don't you? Wake up in the dark. For the curious amongst you, that clip was, of course, from Jonathan Demme's 1991 resounding psychological thriller, The Silence of the Lambs, featuring one of the best performances in cinema, period, from the one and only Sir Anthony Hopkins. My man. But it segues me neatly to an important point. This list is almost impossible to do. There are so many worthy horror films to make this list that I rearranged it over and over again before I was even remotely happy. So, as expected, honourable mentions go to The Silence of the Lambs, The Blair Witch Project, Candyman, Cure, The Sixth Sense, Ringu, Event Horizon, Cape Fear. Yeah, you get the picture. Kicking off at number five, seven, 1995. You wanna come take a look at this? Now, you may be of the constitution that a psychological neo-noir detective thriller doesn't deserve to stand tall and take its place amongst the greats of 90s horror cinema, but I'd say that you're mistaken because David Fincher's 1995 foray into the darker spectrum of human emotion is one of the most horrifyingly accurate depictions of our innate nature as individuals, and it's in the implication of Seven where this film truly shines. And while another cinematic classic of its ilk, The Silence of the Lambs, serves to be the benchmark for psychology and crime in cinema, the thing that's sets them apart is that David Fincher's Seven is also wrapped up neatly with all the trimmings and trappings of true horror. Featuring some incredible career defining performances from Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman, Seven tells a tale of a serial killer obsessed with the seven deadly sins, a man named John Doe, played with absolutely bone chilling believability from Kevin Spacey, who serves to complete the triangle with one of the best acting feats in horror cinema. Pitt steps up to the plate as the wet behind the ears detective David Mills, alongside the veteran seen it all before. William Somerset, played by Freeman, and the pair seemingly exemplify the dichotomy of the 90s as they follow the breadcrumbs of the insanely perverse and mechanical mind of Space's John Doe. Despite being a damn fine detective thriller, this film is grotesque. And I mean that in a good way, with each scene painted like a picture in all its vivid gore, serving to signpost the descent into Fincher's eternal downpour in his cinematic metropolis of the damned. If you can't tell, this film is fantastic, and the only reason it hits under a five point is that it isn't true horror in the conventional sense. Still though, that doesn't make it any less horrifying. What's in the box? Next up at number four, Jacob's Ladder, 1990. Dead. No. Oh, I just hurt my back. I'm not dead. What are you then? I'm alive. Ah, sheesh. Guys, if you've ever seen this film, you'll know exactly what kind of deep, dank depths of despair we're about to outline. This film is bleak. Like, really, really, really bleak. But once you manage to let its unsettling sense of hopelessness and misery permeate its way from the screen and down into your soul, Jacob's Ladder is truly one of the finest horror flicks of the 1990s. And depending on your outlook in life, believe it or not, this film is a true, rare moment of cathartic fiction. On top of that, it's also a scary review of the horrors of the Vietnam War, so yeah, it manages to cram in quite a lot. Written and directed by Adrian Lin, the man responsible for the awesome 1987 thriller Fatal Attraction, as well as 1983's Flashdance, of all things, Jacob's Ladder is in direct reference to the biblical notion of the metaphysical meeting place between heaven, hell and earth, and first and foremost, it is a film about the true nature of death. It stars Tim Robbins in perhaps one of his greatest performances of all time as Jacob Singer, an American combat medic distraught over the death of his young son, who is trying to regain some semblance of normality whilst being beset upon by nightmarish visions and violent dreams. This film is intelligent in all the right places, and it makes a point without ever trying to shove it down your throat. Believe me, you will feel weird once the credits start to roll at the end of this film, but strangely enough, despite that, it's really worth it. Coming in at number three, The Exorcist 3, 1990. 
sorry about that guys, but this film really is that scary. And it also may be perhaps the most conventional horror movie on this list. And that's rare to say for a horror sequel of a sequel to one of the greatest horror films of all time, William Freakin's The Exorcist. I have to admit I was pretty late to the game in sinking my teeth into this film, and despite its appearance, the third installment of The Exorcist, which directly ignores the terrible 1977 Exorcist 2, is one of the most surprising and downright terrifying entries in 90s horror cinema. And of course, who better to deliver that than the author of the original 1971 novel, William Peter Blatty. Now, this film was Blatty's second ever pop in the director's chair, which is impressive in itself, and you should definitely check out his first attempt, 1980's The Ninth Configuration, because it's awesome. But what he managed to do here was take the original Exorcist and somehow give it a sense of horrifying charm, which feels a little bit weird to say. Now, listen, you can't compare the two films at all. William Freakin's horror onslaught is rightfully one of the best films in the genre, but what Blatty managed to do with The Exorcist 3 is somehow encapsulate the cat and mouse serial killer trope of the late 80s and 90s exemplified, while simultaneously capturing the original terrifying spirit of Pazuzu, stick it all in a mental asylum, buzz it in an ice cold blender, and then let it play out in a chilling portrayal of what happens when you try and interrogate the devil. This film is really really good. Give it a watch. You won't be disappointed. Swinging in at number two, In the Mouth of Madness, 1994. You do. You're my mommy. Know what today is? Today is mommy's day. Now, I'm not entirely sure if we could do this list without rightfully placing John Carpenter's final entry in his Apocalypse trilogy firmly near the top. And I'm fairly happy with sticking it in at number two because, like I said, this list is difficult, guys. The 90s is just filled with too many memories. Deservedly, though, In the Mouth of Madness somehow managed to maintain itself as a wholeheartedly unique and original entry, whilst the rest of horror cinema was scrambling to jam itself into some kind of franchise in an awkward attempt to stay relevant. You see, John Carpenter was brave enough to take take the old gods and cosmic horrors of Lovecraft and put them all in a dazzling psychological horror show, which is probably why this film kind of went under the radar and never truly got the cinematic credit it deserved. In the Mouth of Madness stars the resounding Sam Neill as John Trent, an insurance investigator tasked with tracking down one of the world's most famous horror novelists, Sutter Kane, whose latest book has caused a number of his readers to experience some rather strange psychological happenings, to say the least. As is hallmark with Carpenter's work, In the Mouth of Madness features some of the most grotesque grotesquely entertaining physical effects in horror, an incredibly tight yet never forced narrative, all pinned together by a resounding performance from Sam Neill himself. Yeah, In the Mouth of Madness has to be here. After all, do you read Sutter Kane? And finally, coming in at our number one spot, Scream, 1996. Listen, it was Jason, I saw that movie 20 goddamn times! Then you should know Jason's mother, Mrs. Voorhees, was the original killer. Jason didn't show up until the sequel. And I kind of get the feeling that while some of you may disagree about this number one placement, no other film exemplifies 90s horror than the slasher flick that reinvented the slasher wheel, Wes Craven Scream. A film so damn good that it kicked off an entire tirade of horror goodness that we're still reaping the benefits from today. And the reason that Scream also takes our number one spot is because it happily pays its horror dues, giving credit to all its slasher forefathers in an incredibly intelligent and entertaining manner. This film was made for horror fans and Wes Craven knew that because the 90s were a time when media was slowly picking up the pace and we all wanted to talk about how much we knew about horror cinema or drop a few knowledge bombs at a Halloween house party about the terrifying tropes that had paved the way thus far in the genre. But guess what? The ghost face killer already knew it all and all we could do is stare wide-eyed in terror as he ran at us with a knife. I love Scream. It's just a fantastically entertaining horror film that doesn't once ever manage to take itself too seriously. Yet always manages to deliver on its insightful and captivating motivation to keep us on the edge of our seats and scare us witless exactly when it matters. The 1990s were the decade of the teen slasher. I know what you did last summer, Urban Legend, Halloween H2O, Cherry Falls, The Faculty, but every single one of them falls short when compared to Scream. If you haven't seen Wes Craven's slasher masterpiece, stop what you're doing and go and watch it right now. And thankfully as well, it created some pretty damn good sequels, Scream 3 being a rare honourable mention. I can't say much more guys, it's the 90s. It's Scream. They're the same thing. Well, there we have it, horror fans. Our list for the top five scariest horror movies from the 90s. What do you guys think? I know for sure there'll be more entries for this particular list, so why don't you let me know your thoughts down in the comment box below. Before we depart, though, let's take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. First up, Hans Harmon says, Jack, the bearded badass of Scaredom. Aw, dude. That's so nice. Actually, Hans, would you mind if I stick that on my resume? Sounds like a pretty dope reference, actually. Next up, E.C. Sherman says, 
Okay, Jack, at some point you must talk about Local 58. It's a YouTube ARG that has a ton of hidden lore behind it. Believe me, watch Contingency. It's up your alley. Well, EC Sherman, thank you for the heads up. Dude, I haven't heard of Local 58, but I'll be sure to check it out. The last time I slipped down an ARG rabbit hole, though, I was drawing maps of a desert in Nevada at 3 a.m. in the morning. Guess it comes with the territory. On that note, horror fans, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this particular video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe button. We'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. Until next time, you take it easy. <laughs>